everyone welcome back to my channel so today I'm doing a requested video which is a rundown of all the classic Estee Lauder fragrances if you're new here then welcome welcome to my channel it's all about perfumes fragrances and if you're a fan like me do you subscribe I have new videos every week let me know your requests for comments down below I do read all your comments and yeah subscribe if you're not already guys I'd love to have you here check out my hundreds of other videos as well so Estee Lauder of course have been around for quite a while they are a massive company and they own so many other fragrance brands like Tom Ford um, they're one of the biggest owners of other brands but they of course have their own Estee Lauder range as well and then they have their modern um, perfect like modern muse I've done a whole video on modern muse but this fragrance video is all about their classics that have been around sort of pre-2000 um, classic classic perfumes that have sort of become um, part of I guess the history of perfume and are still worn by people who've worn them for many decades. So I think when talking about classic Estee Lauder you have to start with Youth Dew, probably their most famous classic perfume. This perfume is so heavy and so strong. You can tell by the colour of the liquid that this is not playing any games. This is heavy. It's super, super oriental with um, incense and spices and peppers, loaves and cinnamon. It's very edible but very very heavy and spicy it lasts really well it has projection you can smell this on people a mile away um so if you want if you love those like incensey heavy perfumes then this is like your classic old school in your face perfume it came out in 1953 so it is still going 70 years almost later and I've no doubt it will make a hundred years because it's still bought and it's still like so well known. So next we have Private Collection and it was called Private Collection because it was reserved only for use by Mrs Estee Lauder. This came out early 70s. This is more of a green and um, mossy perfume. Chrysanthemum really comes through. Hyacinth, Narcissus. So it is floral, a green floral but the flowers they've chose are more traditional like 70s flowers that you don't see a lot in perfumes today which is more like rose peony um jasmine patchouli these are instead it's more like those old maybe more old-fashioned english country garden fragrances and there's so many ingredients in here i think there's like 30 different fragrance notes so they all mix together to create a quite heavy greeny mossy floral Next we have White Linen, which was 1978. Now this name is a little bit deceiving because White Linen, I think it's gonna be quite light and fresh. This is actually quite an intense aldehyde perfume. So along the lines of Chanel Number no. 5. Again, with hyacinth mossy notes in like Private Collection, but predominantly it's that aldehyde note coming through. So this is a bit of a dupe for Chanel Number no. 5, but I'd say it's heavier than Chanel Number no. 5. And again, it has loads of other perfume notes in here as well, which will merge together to create a mossy floral, but I'd say it's like 80% aldehyde, 20% mossy floral. We then have Pleasures. This came out in 1995, so not quite as classic as the others. There have been a million flankers of Pleasures. Let me know if you want me to do a, bit, a video on them all. There's been so many. This is perhaps a little bit more um, modern, fresher, greener than some of the other classic ones. It has peony in. It's got lilac and a rose green notes in as well so it's quite like um outdoorsy but lily of the valley probably is the fragrance note that dominates the most so lily of the valley fans tend to like this so a few years ago estelle order took a lot of their classic fragrances and put them all in the same shape bottle just with different names and sort of re-release re re them as this collection of like classics at the same time they did reformulate them a bit so some of them are not quite as heavy or as complex as they used to be. So first we have Alliage, which came out in 72. Again, this is a um, green mossy perfume, but it has a lot of vetiver in as well. So this is more towards the unisex side of things, vetiver's in so many men's perfumes. So this is for something that wants a heavy, heavy green. This is not like freshly mown grass green. This is like 
deep forest oaky vetiver green. <laughs> Next we have Azure or Azure and um, this is a more woody earthy perfume again though with oat moss and vetiver so it's green but this is more earthy and um, warm woody green kind of like a, a bark off a tree with moss on. Next we have Beyond Paradise which is a quite simple jasmine perfume. It has some other floral notes in here but to be honest the jasmine really dominates. This is one of the more lighter white floral perfumes without those heavy greens or woods or orientals or aromatics. It's just very white floral. So more for your Jean Petit Joy like fans of that jasmine. Next we have Cinnabar which is probably one of the first original clove perfumes. So if you love cloves then this is a fragrance that smells like cloves. It's got a balmy woodiness to it as well. It's quite heavy. It has strong projection. It is again in that more oriental vibes with those cloves. Um, cloves so it's very intense and almost spicy with the cloves like but it has that edibleness to it and then some white florals underneath to keep it sort of feminine but clove is basically the majority of what you get. Next we have Estee by Estee Lauder. This is a pretty jasmine rose, quite simple again. This came out in 68 and the story goes that Mrs. Lauder in um and noticed the light coming through chandeliers and that light was then reflected through her champagne and she thought I want to make a fragrance that resembles that light through chandeliers and champagnes and she obviously decided that jasmine and rose were what that would smell like so it is a kind of sparkling um, but it still has a, that sort of I guess more traditional floral notes to it whereas nowadays if they were trying to create that I think they would use different fragrance notes. Next we have Intuition. This is a green ambery perfume. This perfume's marketing was all about the inner voice. It was meant to represent the inner voice. I don't know what the inner voice smells like but they think it smells like this. It's supposed to be a more modern interpretation of um, classic orientals. Um, so without those things like cloves and spices in it is a bit more modern yes. Next we have Spellbound, which I think is such a good name for a perfume. I'd love to have a perfume called Spellbound. This has carnations in and cardamom and wood. So again, quite edible. It comes across as a warm, spicy floral. Um, a little bit of a sort of mix of a lot of things and no one note particularly dominates. Um, but it is quite heavy. It is quite traditional and classic and it does project. Um, but I just love the name Spellbound. And then lastly, we have Tuscany per Donna. I guess this is supposed to capture the sort of Tuscan Italian warmth. Um, and it has vanilla in, which a lot of the others don't. So it makes it a little bit warmer and sweeter. Woods and ambers keep it heavy. And there are some floral notes that you get at first. Um, but this comes across as a heavy vanilla very warm, I guess kind of like a warm sunshine day or that when it's really warm in an evening in Tuscany, I guess this would be that kind of fragrance. So quite, um, yeah, quite intriguing fragrance. I like vanilla and fragrances. I think they add an interesting depth um, and that's what this one has. So there you go, that's my run through of the classics from Estée Lauder. Of course, none of them are really best sellers now. Perhaps Youth Dew is still topping some charts. Um, I actually did do a Amazon best sellers video and Youth Dew was there in, I think it was the American top 10. So they are still doing well in selling these, but of course not sort of seen advertised. They focus on all the new ones for that. screaming children outside. Mm. So yeah, so that's it guys. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. I'd love to have you here. But that's it guys. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.